Tim McKee, West Rucker, Go Balls 24-7 here inside of the Spectrum Center in Charlotte where Tennessee just punched its ticket to the Sweet 16 and they quite literally had to punch their way to the Sweet 16. Uh, more of a boxing match tonight, a heavyweight tilt uh, between number two seed Tennessee and number seven seed Texas. Tennessee wins 62 to 58. Uh, it was not a pretty game offensively. Kind of discussed that on the podcast we recorded last night, that this was going to come down to the more physical basketball team, and Tennessee was the more physical basketball team. Boy, it was, but only just. You know, like, I mean, that was that was a close that was a close call. I mean, you, you to go three for 25 from three in an NCAA tournament game, I mean, there's dodging bullets, and then there's, like, dodging cannonballs. I mean, they dodged like a cannonball tonight. I mean, that – Full credit to the defense and the toughness because there are no secrets between these coaching staffs. They know exactly what the other one wants to do. It's going to come down to just those kind of inches, right? It's just it really is, and Tennessee had just enough bend. I mean, it, you celebrate it. There's no bad win in this tournament, um, but it's called survive in advance for a reason, right? Sometimes you go out there and thrive. Sometimes you survive, and there's no shame in surviving. You, if you win, you win. No, not at all. And, and it was a, an atrocious shooting night, quite frankly, uh, aside from Tobey Iwaka, who was awesome outside of battling foul trouble. I mean, he might have gone for 20 tonight, 20 and 10, 20 and 15. They had no uh, one who could get in his way. No, nobody at all. Uh, but when it mattered most, they did knock down some shots. Uh, Don't Connect made a three when mm -hmm. it mattered most. Uh, Josiah Jordan yes. James had a big, big corner mm -hmm. three. Uh, Jonas Adu, after splitting a pair of free throws at the line, comes back and knocks both of them. Down, you and I have kind of had a running joke this season of how Jonas loves to split his free throws, and when it mattered most, he did not split. Uh, Dalton, also the king of splitting free throws this season, he had two trips to the line in which he sunk both free throws. Four for four at the end, scored Tennessee's last four points. That put the game away and, and proved really pivotal because Texas went down and made a three there at the end where if Dalton doesn't make his free throws, mm -hmm. then that game becomes very, very interesting. And in the midst of those free throws and the big threes, Got a big defensive stop as well. Yeah, I mean, other than the defensive moments were the plays of the night, right? If you're talking about plays of the night, like, okay, the defense wins that battle. But uh, Connect, you know, you talk during the season, and we all have about, eh, he's, he's okay at free throwing, but he's not great, right? And he's going to have the ball in his hands quite a bit. And um, But he made those shots. But to me, the Adu ones were just absolutely crucial. I mean, Adu, we've been on the floor the past, you know, three days, Ben. Adu took two or three just brutal brutal falls to the ground the past three games that guy is sore his hip his knee his leg he's been beat up right I mean he and he's he's a big guy but he's not a thick guy you know that there's a lot of joints and a lot of a lot of, a lot of things there to hit a lot of bones to hit the ground um, but he stood up tall right there and I, I wondered I, I said to the people I was you know sitting next to early, early in the second half I said Texas only got three fouls since he's gonna have to make one-on-one -on -one free throws and knowing the history of this program and some of those situations and the way that nobody was making shots tonight, that was pucker time. It absolutely was, but full credit to Adu. I mean, that's why coaches from a young age shoot free throws at the end of practice when you're tired. You even run, 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 and then you hit free throws or you're going to run some more. That's why. Yeah, and I, I know it's real easy to gravitate towards the offensive struggles, but I, I think – given that it is an NCAA tournament game as the, the media crew that has helped us out all week celebrates the end of the weekend. We'll give them that one. We'll, we'll give them that one. Uh, it, it's easy to gravitate towards the offense, but it's the Sweet 16. It, it's against Texas. There's a lot of storylines involved. You, you, you got you to gotta go with the glass half full before you go with the glass half empty, and you got to talk about the defensive performance first and foremost. 17 turnovers. I mean, Santiago Vescovi, Zakai Ziegler, and several others were absolute pests all night long. Uh, and that led to 15 points off of turnovers, and that was the difference in the basketball game. Yeah, to me, the story is, is sort of, you know, this is a game that Texas, Rodney Terry and Rick Barnes, you can't fake the love those two have for each other. And Chris Ogden on the Texas staff, also a former Tennessee assistant. Frank Hayes. Yeah, they, 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 you can't fake that kind of love. They wanted no part of this matchup. This is the exact, this is the, the least likely team that either one of them would have wanted to face in this game. But I'll say this about Rick Barnes. If this is going to be a deal where, you know, all you're going to talk about is how you did in the NCAA tournament, and it's a game of fine margins. But if you're going to roast him when they lose, kind of have to praise him when they win. Because if, this is his way of winning. If that's all that people are going to talk about, this tournament, this time of year, do you win or do you not? And, listen, the difference in some of the losses they've had in this tournament and that win, 
I mean, you, you, could, you can't see the line between them. No. That's how close it was. But they made the plays tonight. They got the win, and they, you know, I don't think they could shoot that badly and win in this tournament. I just did not think it was possible. Um, but they did it. They found a way. They absolutely did. And, and last thing to touch on is I, I just think you really have to tip your hat to the program because there was all sorts of pressure on them in this basketball game. Yeah. Not only because it's the first weekend, they have Don't Connect on their team. This feels like the team to finally get over the hump. So they get out of the first weekend, and Rick Barnes had also he also had all the pressure in the world because of who he was playing. Mm -hmm. Like th this was not a not a game that you could lose. It, it would have been a very uncomfortable off season. So they, they got it done with their style of play when it mattered most. Under I, I think just about there's still work to be done. There's still bigger games to be played. Uh, but up until this point, they got it done their way under the most pressure possible. Yeah, like at the end of the day, everyone knows the deal here, right? Like you, at some point, you got to go to a Final Four. We all know that. We all know that. That is 1,000% true. Tennessee's never done it in its history, but that's the job. Like you're funded well enough. You have the team. You have the facilities. You have the funding, the fan base. You have everything, right? Um, but there, it's hard to get there. And this, this was not an easy one for so many reasons. And these guys... Sometimes they almost care too much, and I think it can hurt them because they're not kind of just mercenaries who are out there going out there to play basketball and I'm on to the next thing. Like, they care about their coach. They care about the program. They care about their legacy. And I think sometimes they think about that stuff too much, and it can bother them. But this was a huge hurdle to get through. Now, there's tough things coming. There's no doubt about it. But this game... 3 of 25 in a game that just had so many nasty things written all over it if you lost. You know, we might just look back at this and be like, boy, things changed a lot after this game. Yeah, absolutely. But there's still a big hurdle that they oh, need yeah. to clear. They, they've got to get through this Sweet 16 round, uh, quite frankly, and, and get to the Elite Eight, uh, bare minimum, I, I think. And, and I don't and love that matchup as much if it's Creighton. I don't love it. We'll see what happens. It's the Sweet 16. It's going to be a tough matchup. As you just pointed out, it'll either be three-seed Creighton or 11-seed Oregon. When we were walking out here to film this, it was a two-point game with like 11 minutes to go. We'll see what ends up happening in that game. But Tennessee will be back in action uh, next Friday at some point in Detroit, Michigan, playing in the Sweet 16. It's the second time in program history they've gone to the Sweet 16 in consecutive years, joining the Bruce Pro teams that did it in 07 and 08. And uh, on Friday against Creighton or Oregon, they'll be playing for a chance to go to their second Elite Eight in program history, which is a pretty wild statement. And if they are playing in that game, they'll be playing to go for the first Final Four ever. Absolutely. And the whole time we're up there, I'm going to call you B-Rabbit, just to just, I, just, just let you know. I mean, we're, uh, we're going to Motown it up, right? I mean, listen, it's there's a lot on the line. And I think it's, sometimes this team could stand to maybe not think about that and just go play the game. That's easier said than done. We're sitting here saying that. It's largely impossible. Yeah. You just have to listen. Anything in life that's worth having, that's really worth having and cherishing, it's hard to get. And you have to go through tough things to do it. And you know what, guys? Big, big load of pressure off tonight. But get some sleep, ice up for a couple of days, watch some film, kick back a little bit because it's coming again in about four or five days. Absolutely, and Wes and I will be there in Detroit next weekend, but first we're going to get out of here in Charlotte and get back to Knoxville for a couple of days, and we'll have plenty of coverage up at GoBalls247.com of Tennessee's round of 32 win over Texas to advance to the Sweet 16. He's Wes Rucker. I'm Ben McKee.